All right, guys, so we got everything set up and cleaned up here. So I'm going to go ahead and move this AC compressor. Like I said, I don't have to take it off. Just making this lighter. So that just leaves that accessory bracket there that needs to come off. That way we can get a full view of the front of this. So I was saying about the exhaust back pressure tube, that would be this tube right here. And uh, the fitting on the end of it likes to not come out of the manifold. So that was what we needed the heat for. So the next order of business here is we have this bracket on the top here. We can go ahead and take that off because it's in the way. Uh, we won't be using a beauty cover on this. So. Just take it completely out of the way here. Just set the nuts back on so that they don't get lost. To be honest with you, I don't even know where the beauty cover went for this truck. I don't even know if it ever even had one. Some pieces of the old belt that uh, locked up on it a while back, whenever the water pump locked up, it uh, quit moving and completely shredded the belt. We had a fuel leak on this truck before we tore it down. I need to sit down and uh, once we get this open, check it out and see where that fuel leak was. I'm hoping it's not the fuel bowl itself because if that's the case, we uh, might be doing a fuel system on this truck, even though he probably doesn't want to do that. But we're gonna work on getting all this stuff taken out that way we can uh, get all this opened up here so a lot of this stuff doesn't require power tools but it just makes makes life so much easier to use the power tools instead of using hand ratchets because this is also a hand ratchet when it wants to be or when you need it to be rather. So just like so, you can use it. And we'll go ahead and pull this guy off of here. Pull your vacuum line out. Since this is a Super Duty, it has this vacuum line. And we'll thread these bolts back in here and set this off to the side. So we're just going to be removing the whole top end of this today. Uh, we did the manifolds already. Just trying to get this torn down so we can get to the point where we can get this cleaned up. And then also get moving on getting this project put back together. Because this is going in the sandblasted frame. So we also want to take great care on this because there's so much dirt that is in the middle of this engine bay that uh, we don't want to drop any of that in to the engine because we're not opening this engine up at all. Uh, there's no need to open it up. It ran fantastic. So we're just refreshing the little stuff as far as the um, oil pan and stuff like that. Your general maintenance, I guess you could call it, even though it's not, it's just stupid 7.3 stuff, basically. Never did like these clamps. They're always a pain. But they work, so. Let 
and then we have the vacuum line that we disconnected already. And then this vacuum line back here. And then there's a vacuum line down here in the intake. Trying to not break it. So there's our vacuum lines. We'll just pull them off of here also. As long as they want to come off. Slightly delicate with these because it's old and rubber. Might just be leaving that on there just because it's much, much easier. And then going ahead and just taking it off the bracket. We'll go ahead and thread this bolt back in here. So there's the uh, back back pressure. Um, or sorry, not back pressure. The wastegate vacuum lines. So then also you have another plug down here. Now, granted, this is all Super Duty specific stuff. So as you can see, this is nice and loose. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab my shop vac and sweep that up so nothing ends up in the engine. off of here so we'll go ahead and pull these remember I said you want to be careful here because you want to try to not get dirt down in here which is sometimes easier said than done and then go ahead and Plug the holes. Anything will work. Paper towels, rags, anything. Just want to make sure that nothing ends up in there. So that's your upper intake there. And like I had said, this is a Super Duty, so you have a couple extra things. This is the owner's wiring that he added to do the... Um, custom exhaust brake with the butterfly valve that's factory on these. So we're actually going to be deleting that so that won't be needed any longer. This is the old intake heater here. We gotta go ahead and get all this unplugged and undone here so we can remove this wiring harness. But um, we're gonna go ahead and get this turbo off of here because this really needs to come off so I can get it rebuilt. So these are 10 millimeter bolts that hold this down. Uh, the one thing I do have for this are these blank dry wrenches. So these are really nice for this because make sure you get a nice good grip on these, on these bolts because they're generally pretty tight. I know you can't really see what's going on back here. So they are uh, just the pedestal bolts. So this one's a little more difficult because of where it's at. But this is where these flank drive wrenches really, really shine is on stuff like this, where you need to make sure you get a good bite and you're worried about um, stripping these out because that's the last thing you want to do is strip these out. This one might be... Might have to get this one with a socket. Thankfully, this one's easy to get to. Just can't get to it that well. Could probably use the open end side, maybe. So the open end on these is also flank drive, but it's 
trying to spread it because these things are always really really tight so we'll go ahead and grab the uh, six point socket and we'll break that one free by hand So once you get those bolts loose, a lot of guys will tell you you can get it with a, a 10 millimeter um, swivel or quarter drive, 10 in a swivel. I've never, I've never seen where you've been able to loosen these with quarter drive. I've never seen it. I've tried it. I've tried it out of the truck. It never works. Because they are so tight. And so very inaccessible. So like I said, we're loosening these. I used a 10 millimeter with the swivel on it just to get these bolts the rest of the way out so right now that turbo will lift off of there uh, the only thing you have to keep in mind is there's two seals back there so those are your oil feed and drain for oil so your oil feed up into the turbo which feeds your actual turbo and also the back pressure valve and then you're drained back into the valley, or I'm sorry, into the oil pan. So this should come off of here. And this thing's also not light. And we'll set this on some cardboard down here where you can't really see it that well because it's got oil on the bottom. And we'll go ahead and turn this a little bit so you can see your oil and... Uh, your oil feed and return. Now you can also see how grimy this all really, really is. So I may put a plate on here and cover these with some caps and take this out and actually hot pressure wash it just to get all this garbage off of it. Because I mean, there's, there's just screws down in here. There's nuts down in there, everything else. But first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a paper towel and plug those holes because you do not want to introduce any dirt into the oil system if you don't have to. So I usually leave the O-rings on there until we're 100% ready to put the turbo back on because they also help kind of hold these paper towels in there with a little bit of a seal, so to speak. But short of taking the fuel bowl out, which this is this monstrosity here, you know, it's like this is a much easier engine to work on outside the truck. And I, I try to tell everybody, it's like, if you want to work on a 7.3, do anything to a 7.3 that's turbo, which you can do in the truck. It just sucks. Um, you know, the oil pan, it has to come out. I've seen guys try to not do it that way and it does end up causing them problems. So, you know, if you can get the engine out, um, you know, to do all this stuff, like, you know, you got to torch the manifolds off if you have to replace them and, you know, get into the, the turbo bolts, it's so much easier, you know, just being able to roll this engine back and forth, it's, it's much, much nicer. So, um, we got some wiring here that needs to come off and <clears throat> we'll work on getting some of this off now carefully so we don't break any of the clips just take our time with it here and if you're not sure where all this stuff is supposed to go uh, you know how they say a picture's worth a thousand words so you know always try to make sure you take pictures of what you're doing if you're not sure of 
yourself or not sure where everything's got to go. So like, I don't, I don't foresee me needing to take the wires off of this relay here because I can just take the whole thing off of the bracket and then all the wires will stay where they need to stay. And I used a the 10 millimeter on the quarter drive again for this because we do have this uh, stand core relay, which is much larger than what is supposed to be here. So it's a little bit more of a pain to get in and out, especially with the um, this heater relay here also. So it's easier just to keep all these connected up so that you don't have to uh, try to remember which one goes where. And then obviously put all your nuts back on here so that they don't get misplaced or lost. So that makes that much, much easier. And now you can see this wiring's coming off pretty good. So we've got a couple sensors down in here. Let's try to take care with these, especially this one, because it's notorious for breaking. And looks like we have oil in the ICP sensor, so we're going to have to get a new one of those. I'm sure he's going to love that. Looks like this is already broken, which is lovely. Mm-hmm. Already broke. I love it when stuff comes pre-broken. That's always a plus. Yep, that one is also broken. Uh, gotta love the forever aged plastics. They just don't hold up well. So this bracket holds the 42 pin plug that goes to um, the rest of the truck there. So you gotta, the way the Super Duty is, you have to, uh, unclip it from its bracket and it'll pull through gently. This plug is going to cause a problem. So everything's off. Except for that one plug. which looks like it melted at some point or has some really, really nasty fuel on it. Yep, really nasty fuel. So I think we found our fuel leak. Oh yeah. So we'll have to do something with that fuel bowl. So like I said, it's easier to keep this all together. Then you know where everything goes. So the only thing left up here now to remove is this fuel bowl. And you have a drain. Let me uh, see if I can spin this around so you can see a little bit better here. Okay, so I grabbed a camera here. You can see how this looks like it's all like glossy hard. So um, he had ran some alternative fuels in this truck and it looks like it ate some seals. So we're gonna have to uh, do something about that but this was the plug that was giving me a problem here. So if you ever want to work on one of these trucks, this fuel bowl, even on the OBS trucks, it's, it's always in the way. No matter what you do, it's in the way. You want to work on high pressure oil pump? It's in the way. You know, you want to do anything, it's, it's in the way. 
So yeah, it's just, I, I, I hate fuel bowls in the valleys of these trucks. They're always in the way and it just, they cause problems because look how much fun this would be to work on the IPR, which is down here. Or, you know, if you want to work on this high pressure oil pump, you got to take all this crap out of the way. And it's like, just get rid of it. If you have the, if you have the ability to get rid of this and do an, uh, a different fuel system, please, by all means do that. It's only going to make your life easier. However, we got to do something. We're going to have to take this out and possibly rebuild it. As of right now, I think we're just going to leave it in here um, only because it doesn't need to come out at this moment. Uh, really working towards trying to get this valley emptied out so we can get this cleaned up. I mean, there's all kinds of crap in here that just, it needs to, we need to get this cleaned out. So, you know, we were talking previously about uh, fuel lines and fuel systems and stuff in the, uh, the uh, comparison video, we were like, hey, you know, do these trucks have, do the Super Duty trucks have this hole here for the fuel pump? And uh, looks to me like it's there. So, and it's just a freeze plug. And uh, I didn't mention this in the video. However, these blocks are all the same, you know, because you can see that in there. But, uh, there's no cam lobe for the fuel pump. So if anybody wants to use a Super Duty engine in their OBS, the uh, boss is there for your mechanical fuel pump. God forbid you want to use it, uh, but you still have to change your cam out. So we're going to call this a day for this video. Um, we have to finish uh, getting this cleaned up. I got to clean all this up. Uh, we're going to try and get this clean before we do any more work to it now that we can get in here and get this all serviced up so like i said we have new oil rail plugs for the back here uh, we're going to clean all this grime and crap off of it to make it nice and clean uh, clean up the sides of the block rebuild the oil cooler put a new oil pan on make sure everything's good on the bottom end so that's what we're going to do with this one here and hopefully this isn't going to be too, too bad. But one thing I do want to mention here is the fuel line routing for the Super Duty trucks is completely different than the OBS trucks. So the OBS trucks have a dual feed in the rear. So you have a feed and a feed. As you can see, there's only one feed in the rear here. And then you have two fuel lines that come out on this side. And the one is for this feed here. And then you have one that follows around over, over here. So leave this right down here and goes to the front of this head. So this is essentially a returnless system. There's no returns on these. Uh, a lot of guys will do a four feed where you plug fuel into each single port on the head. Um, guys will do an OBS style where you feed the rear and then return at the front. But the fuel bowl does all of the feeding and returning in itself. So guys that do a fuel system will get rid of this and then do a completely different setup. So we need to think about what he wants to do with this, how much he wants to really spend. So we're going to go ahead and call him and see what he wants to do with this. But that'll be the end of the day for this one today. Uh, we're just going to do some cleaning here and no more disassembly until we get some more parts coming in. So thanks for watching today, guys. I really appreciate the views. I appreciate the subscribers. So if you would like to continue the OBS content, the 7.3 content, follow along with the two projects we have going on. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and you'll get updates on all of those projects as we move along with them. Thanks for watching.